Hey, All right. Gre- hey, Greg. <laughs> Hi, Mary Jane. What's up? Well, we're reminiscing about the good old days and the early days of IMAX and how it all got developed. And the, we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of the GSCA. Okay. So I wanted to say that 40 years ago, in 1978, was the first time I saw To Fly. And it changed my life. I, I just... When it started out with that small frame at the Smithsonian, I saw at the theater, and then when it went big, I had never seen anything like that before, and it just blew me away. And I changed my career. I was a planetarium director, and then I wanted to get into IMAX. I loved everything about it, and here I am, <laughs> lucky to be sitting next to you 40 years later. You know, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's been a fun experience, the whole decades-long uh, development of this industry. And... What a lucky thing it was that we were there at the very beginning. It was. I feel like I really experienced the whole 40 years, all the ups and downs and the development, and where we are now is just amazing. Yeah, thanks. Do you remember your first GSEA? Yeah, I do. Um, Well, Bill Bennett went to the very first one, and we weren't sure at that particular moment whether or not it was going to be valuable enough to us, and it was a. We had to pay for an airplane trip and 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 hotel rooms and all of that. But he came back, and he was really excited about it because the theater directors and museum directors who were there, and it may have been in St. Louis. Uh, no, excuse me, it may have been in St. Paul, but um, he was really, really um, turned on by it because. There were five or six museum directors, um, maybe a couple other theater directors, and the excitement was there because we knew we were at the beginning of this new, amazing media that people love to watch these movies. They love to go to an IMAX theater. You know, Jim and I had been to Toronto and San Diego, but also to... um, Spokane at the World's Fair and we fell in love with IMAX at that time and you end up just at the very beginning of an industry that you never know you know we didn't know whether or not it was going to go anywhere whether or not there were going to be other theaters opening up or not the theaters were expensive to produce um, the you know the, the the building was four or five million dollars, the projector was one or two million dollars with all the sound and everything. And so that was a lot of money for a museum to put together just to begin a whole industry. And so you ended up not knowing if it was all going to work. We were doing other films at the time too, just to kind of protect ourselves and TV commercials and Hollywood films. But um, we were so thankful that the IMAX industry took off. <clears throat> I remember those early days too. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I remember you and Bill. You'd always come with Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We'd be in Toronto in the middle of September, and Bill and Greg would walk in. Yeah, wearing it's a good shirts. thing we had shoes and, on. <laughs> you know, all the museum directors had suits and ties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were all dressed up. Yeah. My favorite thing was to find filmmakers in the in those days of the early GSEA. I always wanted to sit by you because I wanted to hear the behind the scenes. Oh, like yeah. I wanted to hear, how did you get that shot? And you told me something recently about To Fly that I thought was really great with Michael Collins. Oh yeah, you know, the, the fun thing about making that movie was at the same time that we were making the film, Michael Collins was responsible for building the Air and Space Museum this huge facility you know they'd spent decades getting the land all put together and then the design of the building and and they were taking a huge gamble to to see whether or not people would actually come to an air and space museum and uh so when 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 we were hired to make the movie he said greg and jim look i have plenty of facts and figures in this museum I want you to give me a feeling of what flying really is. This is the only place in the entire museum where we'll be able to get a sense of what it is to take off into the air. And, and he said also, 
you know, make it a fun movie. Don't give me facts and figures. Make it something that was really enjoyable um, because this is going to be a 27-minute experience for our audience. Um, they have plenty of other facts and figures to le learn, and, and they will learn those, but, but this is where they can just express themselves. This is where we can give the audience a feeling and a joy, and if you can put comedy in, that's even better. But he said, those are my instructions to you. Come back in a year and a half when you're done. Uh, don't call me because really, I'm too busy. <laughs> right. I, I want to see right. you in a year and a half with a right. movie, and I trust you. Goodbye. <laughs> I love, and so, I you love know, that story. It was, it was the best kind of instructions from uh, a museum director or a producer that I've ever heard because that's what Jim and I did. We love to make movies mm -hmm. um, that entertained. Uh, we had never really done a factual movie before that point. And um, we'd done a lot of films about surfing and about, you know, with, with Hollywood, uh, films about seagulls and, and towering infernos and all kinds of other things. Uh, we did Above San Francisco, which was more fact-based, but it was poetic and it was fun to watch. And so we were used to making movies that entertained and, and weren't fact-based and, and were, they had some comedy in them. And so um, that's the way we approached it. And our executive producer, Francis Thompson, was all in favor of that. He said, wow, we don't need another fact-based movie um, for the bicentennial year. We need something that's going to be joyous. Give the experience, because you know what's yeah. great about what you did was for the theaters, was in the beginning we were selling the format as well and yeah. the whole theater the whole idea the whole concept so like my first theater was hutchinson which opened in 1980 and we were we had to sell what imax was what the format was and that film did it yeah because it showed the format off and it was just perfect for us to launch the whole the whole thing well we knew that um and that's why we we basically put every trick in the book in that one film it's only 27 minutes long but we we have the you know the, the train, train. Know, running right that. into know, the camera and we have these beautiful flight shots that and upside down uh, the lady goes upside I down i mean everything that we could do including stealing from Cinerama that the idea that you start small and then you blast them with a gigantic well, screen that's like launching the whole format the whole imax yeah. format it was just fantastic we knew we had one chance to make a big impression yeah. and and the other films that we'd seen, there were, I think, four other films that were made before Two Fly. Um, and, and Graham Ferguson did, did uh, the majority of them, and he did a fantastic job. But they, some were stories, some were um, straight documentaries, one was a comedy. Um, what we wanted to do is put all of that into one example of what IMAX could be, and to and and to do that, we we designed new helicopter mounts, two big helicopter mounts, one for the bottom of the helicopter to to shoot going forward, and one for the, from the side to shoot mm. as you dolly around things. Um, people said, "Wow, those those aren't going to work. This is just not going to happen." And we were confident that we could get it yeah. to work, and with Nelson Tyler, who was a good good friend, he designed them and kept testing them until they did work. And finally, we got them to work. Uh, the film turned out really well, and, and people liked it. Oh, it was just the best, and it's still playing. <laughs> you know, when it became yeah. the, the year, the, it got that great award of being one of the top films of the first hundred years of filmmaking by the Library of yeah, Congress. Yeah, that was something big for us. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they chose, when cinema hit its hundredth year, and, and it, was, it began in 96, 1896, 1996, um, the Librarian of Congress decided, let's choose the 100 best films, the most representative films of the last 100 years of cinema, and we'll honor those. 
and they chose to fly as one of those 100, uh, along with, you know, Star Wars and Gone, Gone with, with the, the Wind. wind. And, you know, know, you know, know, you know, we're going, what, to fly? <laughs> it's because you never forget it. Yeah. When, when I was opening my second theater in Denver, we opened with To Fly, and everybody came and said, is this the same as that, that To Fly film in Washington? They knew it. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it just, and the museums went crazy. They, after everyone saw it at the National Air and Space, everybody wanted one. Yeah. You know, because it was so great for museums. Well, it had this carefree feeling. And, and you educational, know, you, too. Yeah. Um, it's slightly educational, enough so that it could play in a museum. And it, you know, obviously it played at the Air and Space Museum forever. Plus, currently playing today, you know, 45 years later. But you end up trying to design a film so that it will last a long time. Yep. You know, it you want to pour your heart and soul into it, never give up on it. And essentially, we were producing it up to the day before we, we launched it in July 1976. I know. Well, I asked a teacher one time, because I thought, is to fly educational enough for kids? And I asked a teacher, is this film educational? And she goes, are you kidding? It gives us, the kids get to fly. They, they've never been in an airplane before. And just for that alone, she said, that education is so valuable. So even the teachers think that experience is, yeah. it, the kids will learn a lot. If yeah, they, yeah. They have. You remember what you feel and what you think you see as real life. And IMAX can, is the only format and ever it, it exists that that can do that. It can give you the sense of being there. So when you Same. show outer space, when you show images from the top of Everest, from the bottom of the sea, because they're so vivid and real, you remember it. And so it's a great educational tool. And that's why the teachers love it. That's why they want to bring their kids down. And that's why we're here 40 years later. <laughs> yeah, still, one of the still reasons. Still doing it. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, Greg. You're it's welcome, been really Mary fun. Jane. Really You're fun. the best. You're the best. <laughs>